So someone who's going to play a major part in trying to shut down McCaffrey is with me now, senior linebacker and USC captain Michael Hutchins. Thanks for joining me today. No problem. So, Mike, obviously there's a lot of hype talking about how explosive number five is back there for Stanford. As someone who's matched up against him and studied the tape, what makes Christian McCaffrey so difficult to contain? I mean, I think everything. I mean, he does everything on the field for them. Um, he's extremely versatile, so, I mean, there isn't too much on the field offensively that he doesn't do. So, I mean, going into this game, you have to prepare for him in, in all aspects of the game. I know with some guys, you can try to take them out of their game and, and shut down one aspect, but he can do multiple things, receive the ball. I mean, punt returner, kick returner. He's everywhere, so, I mean, he's in special teams, offense. He does just about everything. So, I think for him, it's just containing them. It, you can't, it's hard to shut someone like that down. That, that does so much. So it's just about containing him and knowing that where he is on the field at all times. Well, right, just in that Pac-12 championship game, he ran for a touchdown, threw for a touchdown, and received a touchdown. Yeah. So he can do it all. But USC and Stanford, it's something that we see time and again. That's power smash mouth football. Yeah. So how does Clancy Pendergast's defensive scheme play into this type of a game? I think it's critical of, of how we play on defense. And I know coming out, we, we can't start slow on defense. And, and we have to try not to let him get going and letting that offense get going. Because once they get going, they control the game. And that, that's something that they're capable, capable of. And Stanford has always been capable of it for the last, I mean, decade or so. I mean, just in the early 2000s, they've been great at, at doing that, handling the clock and just having their way with people on the field. That, so that's something we have to come out and, and try to stop and make them uncomfortable and get them out of their game a little bit. And I think Coach Pendergast has a great game plan for this week and a great scheme to, to match it. Well, it's definitely something that's not new to you. This is your fifth time taking on Stanford, and you've kind of seen the whole range of emotions. You were on the yeah. team in 2013, the upset, and then also last year, the loss in the Pac-12 title game. Yeah. So how much does this game mean for you, and is there any extra incentive in your mouth after that last year? I don't think it's any extra incentive at all. I think it's just another game. Uh, I mean, we know who we're going to play. I mean, that's that's no that's no secret at all. We're going to go play a physical, tough football team that's always well-coached, well-disciplined team. So that's one thing that we always have to keep in mind when we're going up here to play them. But just it's just any other game. It's something you can't get too high for, something you can't take too lightly. It's just you have to stay in, in sequence as in your regular routine, I um, mean, each game that you go into. And this is just another one of those games. Well, switching gears from the team aspect to the U aspect, coming into the season, you had to really fight for this starting role. Pendergast said that your knowledge of his system from your freshman year definitely showed how you were able to control all the assignments and give out commands. So now that you're two games in, how comfortable do you feel in this role? Uh, I mean, I'm extremely comfortable. I think just through the whole process, through the spring, through spring practice, through summer and fall camp, I mean, I think I've been in this role kind of the whole time. So it's nothing that, that has changed for me. And I know just starting in the spring, knowing that I had been in the scheme before, it was my job to just kind of get guys up to speed a little bit or anything that they had questions with. It was just a chance for me to help them. And anytime you're in one of those teacher roles and also know your stuff, you just you get to know everything pretty well. And I, I, I got to feel extremely comfortable in the springtime doing that. And, um, and I think so far, two games in, we're starting to click a little bit as a defense. And, and I like the way that we're headed and, and trying to form our, our identity. Well, that teacher role definitely played a part in why you were voted one of the team captains. So you have to have those relationships with all the guys on the team. Yeah. But one of the closer relationships that I've kind of seen develop is between you and Chris Hawkins. Where does that friendship kind of stem from? Uh, I think it, it stemmed back from when, when we were getting recruited. And I know our recruiting class was extremely close. We were pretty small. I think we had 13 guys in total. Um, so that came from that. And then also... I mean, we lived right by each other freshman year. And I mean, I think we've just been close since, since freshman year. And now, I mean, we've been living together for the last few years. And I think I, I just got to deal with him at this point. As a roommate, <laughs> what's something that he does that's wacky then? Uh, I mean, he's dancing all the time. <laughs> so as, as soon as you come home, there's always music playing. And I mean, he may be up at all hours of the night eating, doing anything that, <laughs> anything, everything that he's not supposed to be doing, he's always doing. Uh, I mean, he really doesn't sleep. He'll be up at 3 or 4 a.m. watching Netflix. <laughs> so, I mean, that's something that, that you wouldn't expect from him. Well, speaking about music, I know you're a big Rihanna fan. <laughs> what is uh, your favorite Rihanna song then? 
Uh, right now, I would say it had to be uh, needed me off her, off her new album. I had a chance to go to her concert. Oh, there you uh, go. Back in May at the Forum, which was pretty cool. Can you give me a little, a little tune? Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> Come on, let's hear it. The I'm, I'm all right on, on the tune. Uh, right. I'm a big Umbrella fan. I like the throwback Rihanna a little bit more. Yeah, that's where, that's where I, I really started liking her back when I was younger, uh, around <laughs> Umbrella time. There you go. Well, thanks for joining me today, Michael. <laughs> Make sure to catch him and the rest of the Trojans in their top 10 test Saturday up there at Stanford at 5. So now over to Savannah to find out a little bit more about how some students are making the trip up north with the team.